Then let us have a look a bit deeper in the railway now. Uh, the three standards, as I have mentioned them already, the 50126, uh, which cons is concerned about the uh, uh, RAMs, so reliability, availability, main maintainability, and safety. Um, this is kind of the real safety aspect or the safety of the functional safety systems. Yeah? Is the system reliable? Is the system available? Is the system maintainability, maintainable? Uh, very important safety issues um, which are covered in the 5126. The 5129 talks about uh, electronic system signaling which also includes hardware. There is, yeah, there is in the railway a bit of differentiation where the 51 to 9 is valid and where the 51 to 8, but still it's true the 51 to 8 covers the software, the 51 to 9 covers hardware, and from a system point of view it's more the 51 to 9. Okay, last but not least 51 to 8, the main topics of this standard, you have, uh, you have here now in the, in the bottom of uh, this blue box, so starting with the supporting processes, which are quality assurance, configuration management, uh, some people even call the testing and supporting process, um, the processes you need around the development. Second one is the requirement engineering, software requirements, uh, which is a whole chapter and a lot of questions there and, issue and, and, and topics to be considered. Then the software architecture and design, there are the aspects you, of course, you can't only test the system and it's safe. You have to introduce in the architecture aspects that you get safe systems. So it's a constructive and the uh, and the process aspects function to fulfill a complete functional safety. Next point: software integration and testing. Uh, of course, integration and test it's staying standing for its own uh, very important part. Then the software safety integrity levels, which we'll see later with a comparison to other ones, the software management organization, let have me a word on that. Functional safety, the idea behind functional safety is clearly that it's a combination of a lot of things, a lot of things, or more things, yeah. It's not only coding software safely, it's, it's, uh, it's also, uh, you need an organization, you need, you need, uh, you need a process, uh, you, you need a safety culture in your company. It's also, as I said already before, it's from the beginning, the first idea of the project to the decommissioning of it. But also the management is important, it plays its important role. And if an uh, authority, for example, discover in your company or get the feeling that there is no safety culture whatsoever, then it will be very difficult for you to certify. Yeah. Um, configurable software systems is a special point, as the next one in the 51 to 8, which uh, is very interesting but still special due to its configurable software. Uh, one uh, thought about it, if you have a configurable so software system that's very nice to program and very nice to handle, but to fully verify, to get 100% coverage, it's very difficult, uh, functional coverage. Uh, and software maintenance as the last point, which but it's points already beyond the uh, development process. So then let us talk about um, 51 to 8 and the other safety standards, make a comparison, most important points. Um, the 51 to 8 is an implementation of the 615 weight. Uh, you can switch to the next slide. Um, Yes, uh, this is an implementation of a 6158 considering, also the 5128, considering the special needs of a railway control and protection system. You have seen in the 5129 as a signaling system. That's a bit also the difference. So then we have few similarities between all of them, more or less, as I'm looking from a bit of a higher point of view. Uh, 262, 6158, 5128, and actually all of the safety standards are, as their name is already telling, focusing on a safety uh, hazards, meaning not on security. So, uh, so far we didn't have the issue of security as uh, embedded systems, even, uh, even a rail system or an aeroplane or a car was until recently just a single system and there was no communication with other systems. This is now, as all of you know, changing and it will dramatically change in the next years. So we get all these aspects that people who want to hijack the system 
due to some reasons, whatever reason they are, um, that they can do this now. And this is where the functional safety centers are not talking about. Uh, the functional safety centers, I think, have to thought about: uh, Can the system hurt any people? Yeah, can it can it can it hurt uh, people, uh, especially persons as a human beings? Uh, and the security is not part of it. There are different standardization on security, and there's all in a. I think, from my point of view, in a in a in a flow. This will you will come up in the next years with a lot of news in the security aspects. So then, also the fifth, the, the functional safety standards are not handling um, environmental qualification. This is mostly outside of it. Uh, even so, 6158 covers a little bit from my point of view. But in essence, uh, this is not part of the functional safety. This is different norms and standards for the things like extreme temperature, which temperature, which water, which vibrations. You have to, the hardware has to fulfill its hardware qualification, if you like, yeah, from an environmental condition point of view. So as we have now some similarities, now we come to, a, from my point of view, a bit of a difference between the standards. Um, in comparison, as I wrote there, to other standards, the 51 to 8 emphasis strongly on a very clear defined organizational structure, the different roles in the safety projects and the competence of the project members. And what I mean there, we will see in the next one. Uh, I mean here, you see the SIL levels on the left hand side, which we'll explain later, uh, but probably all of you know SIL 3 and SIL 4 are the high levels, so the most critical systems are SIL 4. And there you see uh, in the boxes, these dotted boxes is same organization, so the project of course is the same organization, RSR means uh, the authority, which is a different organization, but if you look for SEAL 3 and SEAL 4, you need an own validation engineer, which is outside the project, uh, which means it's probably under the umbrella of the quality assurance, because according to ISO 9000, quality assurance is independent of the project, and the validation engineer has to be as well independent. Um, and this is quite strongly, yeah. Uh, even so, the other functional safety standards are also relying or based on ISO 9000. Still, in the standard itself, in the role definition, there is not a role defined which says it has to be a validation engineer uh, part of the project or a part of the, the verification of it. So then, the verification engineer is independent of the validation engineer. The integrator and the tester can be one person, requirement uh, uh, and implementer can be the designer can be also one for SIL 3 and 4. You see relaxation in SIL 1 and SIL 2. Um, project management, requirement engineer, uh, design, implementer, then integration and testing is one person and the verification validation is first of all one can be one person, do not have to be but can be, uh, and the validation engineer is part of the project. But it's, we're talking about SIL 1 and SIL 2, so not such critical systems. Still, to remember, on the rail system, a lot of people can die, but we will see this in the SIL levels then. So, rail system is very critical, so therefore, this may be a reason why they have defined it like that. SIL 0, the, so the lowest critical level, you see a lot of relaxation there, because you have only two different ones, but still you have different persons, yeah? The implementer, so left-hand side of the V model and the right hand side, the verification are still spread into different persons. And that's for SIL 0. This is not really required to this extent in in others, at least in the in the in the way they are living it in the industry. And that's also very important to understand.